Hello there, welcome to Night's Arcade, I'm Sleepless Night, and today I'm going to share my list of games I'm hoping to play on the channel in 2020. Two thousand twenty already has a ton of great games lined up, but obviously I can't play every one. So here are the games I have picked out so far, and that I hope to be playing here on the channel as well as live streaming in twenty twenty. I say hope because things change, games are regularly delayed, life happens. I may also do first impressions videos on some or all of the following games, but my first impressions videos are changing, as I mentioned in the channel update a couple of days ago. In case you didn't see it, there's a link on screen, one in the description, and I'll put another one at the end of the video. If you do stick around until the end of the video, I'll tell you my personal pick for Game of the Year 2019. But first, let's see what 2020 has in store for Knight's Arcade. Journey to the Savage Planet from developer Typhoon Studios is the first of the games I'll be tackling in 2020, and you shouldn't have to wait long because this one is scheduled for release on January 28th. Coming to Xbox One, PS4 and PC, this first-person action-adventure game has you playing as a new recruit to Kindred Aerospace, where you have been sent to a planet at the farthest reaches of the universe to explore, catalogue the local flora and fauna, and ultimately determine if this planet is fit for human habitation. You will have a variety of weapons at your disposal, as well as grapplers and jetpacks, so it seems as though you're being encouraged to catalogue this wildlife in much the same way that I catalogue any wildlife that flies in my window on hot summer nights, usually with the heaviest catalogue I can find lying around. Whether you do all of this alone or online with a friend is entirely up to you. I will be doing the latter, since this just seemed to myself and my regular collaborator Kazorisan like an irresistible candidate for a Sidekicks adventure. If you're not familiar with Sidekicks, there are links in the description to some of our videos, so don't say you weren't warned about what to expect if you decide to turn up for this one. Recent budget challenges, plus the unknown natures of the obstacles you will face, mean that we were unable to send you anything in the way of equipment. <laughs> Cyberpunk 2077 is the latest entry from CD Projekt Red, and there has been so much hype about this, even before Keanu Reeves walked out on stage at E3 2019, that I doubt there's anything I can tell you about it, and in fact most of you probably know more about it than I do. But, in the highly unlikely event that you have never heard of this game before, it's a first-person RPG adapted from a tabletop RPG published in 1998, in which you will play cybernetically enhanced rogue mercenary V, a customizable cyberpunk character searching the vast futuristic game world of Night City and cyberspace itself for an implant which grants immortality. RPGs are my main video game diet, as many of you will know, and CD Projekt Red have proven that they can handle large-scale RPGs. But add in Keanu Reeves, running over pedestrians in futuristic vehicles, and give the whole thing a Blade Runner meets GTA vibe, and you have my attention. So I will definitely be checking it out when it arrives on Xbox One, PS4, PC, and Google Stadia on April 16th. If it surprises you to learn that I'm looking forward to Marvel's Avengers, I can assure you that is as nothing compared to how surprised I am by my interest in it, since, with the exception of many of the Spider-Man series, I'm not usually a huge fan of superhero video games. I like superhero movies as much as the next guy, and when I was growing up, I longed for studios to start making more of them, but I also loved zombies and vampires before TV, film and game studios made these once comparatively niche genres about as sparsely populated as courtside seats at a naked celebrity volleyball tournament. It's not exactly a secret that comic book heroes do not often transition well into video games, but early write-ups on this game are looking promising, and it is a multiplayer game, so I am eager to pull on my superhero tights and smash things with a couple of my more comic book oriented buddies. It too seems like the sort of thing that will lend itself very well to some sidekicks live streams, so here's hoping my collaborators are flush with cash and free time when Marvel's Avengers rolls around on May 15th. 
A week later sees the release of Tripwire Interactive's single-player shark PG Maneater. And I might be a little more excited about this one than I ought to be, but I have my reasons. When I look back at my childhood, Steven Spielberg's 1975 classic Jaws had a more profound effect on me than I perhaps realised at the time. It can't be a coincidence that as well as Jaws being one of my favourite movies, Spielberg became one of my all-time favourite directors, and Richard Dreyfuss and Roy Scheider became two of my favourite actors of all time, and I became fascinated with sharks. Sharks are my favourite animals on Earth, and man, do they ever get a raw deal. As the trailer for Man Eater reminds us, humans kill over 100 million sharks every year while sharks collectively kill just five humans. Those numbers seem insane, don't they? It doesn't seem possible that there could be 100 million sharks in the oceans, but it doesn't take a genius to work out that there won't be for much longer if we keep killing them at that rate, and figures from Greenpeace, the National Geographic, and the Smithsonian Institute all agree that's what we are doing. 100 million to five. I am keen to do exactly as the trailer suggests, and even the score. Chomping my way through boats and people, growing and evolving from a pup to a megalodon, and evading enemies who are out to put an end to my reign of salacomorphic destruction when the game releases on May 22nd. The good news is that although originally a PC-only game, Tripwire recently announced that it will in fact be releasing on Xbox One and PS4 at the same time as on PC, with a Nintendo Switch release slated for later in 2020. The bad news for PC players, depending on how you feel about the whole thing, is that on PC it will be an Epic Games Store exclusive for the first year. If you can deal with that, then join me in wreaking sharky havoc on the Gulf of Mexico, or check it out here on this channel or on my livestream, which you can find out more about soon. Next up is an MMO from developer Double Helix Games, and published by Amazon no less. New World is currently slated for release sometime in May, and I've been watching it for a while now, although it's fair to say I've only really been watching it out of the corner of my eye, since firstly, it's a PC exclusive title, and secondly, I must not really have been paying too much attention to what the game was about. I love games that centre around exploration. Whether that be space, or sea, a new planet, or a new continent, and I love them all the more when I can play those games with a friend and share the experience with them. So when a new game comes along, which offers exploration and building on a previously undiscovered island, it gets my attention. When I realise I haven't really been paying attention, is when I've been basing my expectations on early gameplay footage, anticipating an Ark or Atlas-style exploration game with crafting and resource gathering, like this, and then they suddenly drop a new trailer at the Game Awards which makes it look like Evil Dead meets Night at the Museum. This much, much, much darker tone has dampened my enthusiasm a little, but I am still intrigued, so let's just put this one in the might be playing list and we'll see how it goes. Changing tone dramatically, and with a relatively obscure release date of Spring 2020, is another multiplayer, this time a co-op survival, with a difference. That difference being your height, which, while normally about 6 feet-ish in most survival games, has been reduced in this game by, well, by about 6 feet, actually. You and up to three buddies will play as pocket-sized pioneers in a world of gargantuan grass blades and Brobdingnagian baseballs, fighting, exploring and building alongside giant insects and drops of water that could wash you down the nearest ant hole. Microscopic worlds like this have always interested me, from Gulliver's Travels to Ermin Allen's Land of the Giants and beyond. For a person who loves exploration as much as I do, shrinking yourself down to give yourself whole new exciting and dangerous worlds to explore, right on your own doorstep, is a no-brainer. So I was on board the second I saw the trailer, and was sharing it with my fellow sidekick less than a minute later. It is much too early to get a good read on what this game is going to be like since it was only announced in November, but given the premise, 
A developer would have to work quite hard to fuck this up. And the developer in question is Obsidian Entertainment, so it's looking good so far. Of course, Obsidian are now owned by Microsoft, so that could change things a bit, and what it means for platforms is that Grounded is likely to be limited to Xbox and PC. What excites me most about this game, though, is the scope for later development and expansion. Obsidian haven't said if this game will have a weather system on release, but it apparently does not have one at this stage, and hazards like strong winds and rain that could seriously affect the lives of players the size of ants seem like an addition that the game could do with, not to mention the possibilities of riding insects and dodging giant humans. That, of course, may come later. We'll have to wait to see what Grounded has in store upon release, but this one is definitely on my shopping list. Ubisoft open-world action-adventure game Gods and Monsters, originally scheduled for February 2020 and now pushed back to who knows when, possibly fall 2020, piqued my interest early on due to its premise and its artistic style, which, while not to everyone's tastes, I find rather appealing. In it, you will explore the island of Blessed, where you will be allowed to roam freely, exploring the island, its dungeons, and apparently even the air above it, as you battle mythological creatures in a quest to restore the power of the Greek gods. Who, by the way, have given you one or two of their godly superpowers for yourself to help you on your quest. Always happy to share their powers around when it comes to saving their own necks. I've always had a mild interest in Greek mythology, but I had to research it quite a bit further when I was writing my first novel, and this game seems, on the face of it, like something I could sink a lot of hours into. You can pre-order this game for Xbox, PS4, PC or Nintendo Switch, but there really isn't all that much information on it just yet, and with the release date now pushed back so far it isn't even 100% certain it will actually land in 2020, who knows when we'll see more of it. Another Ubisoft title, getting its release date pushed so far back we don't know anymore if we'll even see it in 2020, is Watch Dogs Legion. I played the original Watch Dogs and quite enjoyed it, despite it not being everything promised, but I never got around to playing the second instalment, which I am assured was by far the better entry in the series. So when the reveal trailer for the London-based Watch Dogs Legion was voiced by a man who clearly couldn't reproduce an English accent, never mind a London one, if you tied him to a chair for ten years in front of a continuous loop of Alan Rickman reading Shakespeare while Benedict Cumberbatch subtly corrected any pronunciation mistakes with a cattle prod, I was not encouraged. Gameplay footage then started out focusing on a generic Cockney hard case, who at least had the benefit of sounding like he actually was from London, but who interested me so little as a character that I was just about to decide this entry in the series was definitely not for me, when he got himself shot by a dead sec drone, and control is handed over to a psycho granny with a taser and a killer drone that shocks guys in the asshole. Sold. Watch Dogs Legion will apparently let you play as absolutely anybody. All those people you can scan with your phone to find out their bank balances and what colour latex underpants they wear to meetings of the Flat Earthers, you can now recruit any of them. Death in this game is permanent, and when it happens, you can switch to any of the other people you have recruited. So don't get too attached to any of them, and try not to recruit too many 40-year-old dog walkers with two pounds in their account balance and an interest in making amateur porn movies. They might surprise you and bust out some James Bond ass-kicking, but it seems much more likely they will collapse like a bacon staircase the first time they see a riot shield. Watch Dogs Legion will release for Xbox One, PS4 and PC eventually, but whether that will be in 2020 or not is anyone's guess. The last game on my list so far has no definite release date beyond simply 2020 yet, but the series from which it springs is dear to my heart and it will be on my shopping list no matter when it appears, because I waited years for these guys to make something new and I cannot wait to dive back into that world. Oddworld Soulstorm is not precisely a new game, or rather it is, but it's not exactly a new story except that it is. 
If I made that sound confusing, it's because there doesn't seem to be any way to describe this game that isn't confusing, at least to fans of the original Oddworld games. The Oddworld series, when conceived by Lorne Lanning, was originally supposed to be a quintology of tales, each introducing a new character to a shared, larger world. But it didn't quite turn out that way. Abe's Odyssey was a platforming smash hit. Part 2 was pretty much more of the same, and wasn't exactly Part 2, but a second instalment of Part 1. Part 3, or 2 depending on if you're still keeping up, departed from 2D platforming to a 3D world, but was rushed to make it a debut title for the original Xbox and was ultimately unsuccessful. Part 4, there was actually Part 3, was a further departure from the formula and introduced The Stranger to slightly greater success, but not enough to stop Oddworld inhabitants from closing their doors and returning to their Hollywood roots. They later returned with, amongst other things, Oddworld New and Tasty, which was a remake of the original Abe's Odyssey, and now Soulstorm, which is not so much a remake of Abe's Exodus, but more of a complete reimagining, except that this time it is part two of a whole new quintology. Confused? I am. I'm just about ready for a lie down after trying to explain all that, which is partly why I left it until last. It doesn't make a lot of sense. But then neither does much of Oddworld, but that doesn't make it any less gorgeous. Abe's Odyssey was a truly inventive platformer, with mechanics I had never seen before, creatures I had never seen before, and incredible visuals confined to a 2D environment, all topped off with fantastically twisted comedy. It was the first time I remember seeing a 2D platformer that was truly striking in its beauty, so much so that I really desperately wanted to visit the places I could often see in the background, and in this game, you sort of can? Yep, it gets confusing again here because Soulstorm is described by its developers as 2.9D. In that, it is a 2D platformer which constrains you to the platform model, but occasionally moves those platform levels, including you, within 3D space. Yep, now I have a headache. Anyway, Oddworld is awesome, and if you aren't familiar with it, I suggest you download Oddworld New and Tasty. And if you don't fall in love with Abe and with Oddworld, you are dead to me. Or maybe you just like different things, which is cool. What do you want from me? Lorn Lanning gave me a headache. It seems to be coming to consoles and PC, so watch this 2.9D space, I guess. Holy shit! So those are all the games I'm planning to play in 2020 so far, but I want to end this video by giving you a recommendation for my personal Game of the Year 2019. It is currently still available on Game Pass, and if you're a regular watcher of my Let's Plays, you might have watched me do a playthrough of it earlier in the year, but either way, Outer Wilds is definitely one of the most surprising games I've played, and there was really no contest for my Game of the Year this year. This tiny little indie project, later picked up by Mobius Digital, took me completely off guard, since I might never have played it had it not appeared on Game Pass. But I am so glad I did. It sets you out into the star system inhabited by a race of beings called the Harthians, just making their first tentative steps out into space, and tasks you with solving the mysteries connected with the ruins of an ancient civilization known as the Nomai, which may hold the key to the reasons you are stuck in a repeating 22-minute time loop. I have seen the time loop thing done poorly in the past, but the developers of Outer Wilds have executed it very well indeed, and if you have the patience to explore this solar system of tiny planetoids, uncovering the mysteries of who the Nomai were, where they went, and why time is repeating itself, you are in for an exciting, beautiful, and emotional ride in your tiny little landing craft to the absolutely stunning music of young composer Andrew Prahl. This game is truly wonderful, and I have rarely, if ever, seen music used so brilliantly to tell a story as it has been here. The single minute of music repeating in the start menu alone almost made me weep with an instant understanding of the tone of this game without a single written or spoken word. Now that 
is talent. If you haven't checked it out already and you like exploration and following clues and unravelling stories, you should definitely look into it. If you want to know a little more about it before trying it out, you can check out my Outer Wilds First Impressions video, which I will link in the description, in the card now appearing on screen and at the end of the video. That's all from me, but you can follow me on Twitter at Knights underscore Arcade if you want to keep up with developments both good and bad here at the Arcade. Here's hoping 2020 has more good than bad, but if you aren't interested in Twitter, leave a like if you liked this video, subscribe if you're not already subscribed, and ring the notification bell to be notified whenever I post any of this lovely 2020 content. If you're out celebrating, drink responsibly, drive safely and enjoy the new year. I'll see you in 2020, but until then, from Night's Arcade, this is Sleepless Night, saying nighty-night. -night.